Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another series from my channel Interactive Education running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And now we will be beginning the second chapter in the class 10th second term portion that is periodic in chemistry periodic classification of elements. Periodic classification of elements. Now this is again a, a very important chapter because it you know highlights some of the fundamental aspects which one needs to know or before going into higher classes. So in that respect this chapter is pretty important. So it's imperative that you understand the basics of this chapter well. Now let's have a look at some terms first. Now let's have a look at the term periodic. Now, when you hear the term periodic, okay, periodic means something which happens over periods of time, okay, in some periods of time, this particular incident happens, something happens, okay, and that is called a periodic thing, something which happens over time repeatedly many, many, many times, right? So, periodic classification, when you join the terms periodic and classification, it comes out to mean a sense, in the sense that Periodic classification refers to a form of classification in which we group elements, we group substances based on the repetitive nature of their properties. Based on the repetitive nature of their properties. So we group them in such a way that elements or substances with common properties have a pattern, right? They come under one particular group, right? Or we try to study the variation in those properties and we arrange them accordingly, right? Like those which are similar are put together. Those which are, uh, you know, uh, those which have the same properties are put together. Those which have similar ones are put slightly next to them and etc, etc. It keeps going on like that. So that is called periodic classification of elements. Now, why do we need to classify elements, right? What is the need? Next comes the need. What is the need to classify elements, right? Now we can have many, 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 many reasons by which we should classify elements. So the first and foremost reason is for ease of study. Ease of study. It makes studying elements easier, much easier, because we have at present more than 100 and actually we have 118 known elements in the periodic table. Now studying each element singularly and individually will be very very difficult it will be time consuming it will be difficult and you know it is really really not possible because each element has a very unique nature so period classification you know this eases up our process because these elements which have common properties they come together and when they come together it makes it very easy for us to study elements as we group them in groups of similar properties and those which have similar properties are studied as a group. So when we are able to study elements in on the basis of the similarity in their properties as singular units, it makes it very easy for us to study them. Right? So this is one thing. Second thing to identify, identify common properties. So when we try to identify common properties, common, you know, behaviors between elements, that, again, periodic classification helps in that because we tend to group those elements which have similar properties and hence we can identify them very, very clearly. This helps us in, you know, grouping them in, you know, judging their similar behaviors, similar properties, etc, etc. So all this is what we are going to come to. So these are the two very important reasons why we need to classify elements. The first is to e make them easier to study and number two to identify common properties. Okay, so I hope that's absolutely clear. So this is an introduction to periodic classification of elements, right? Now, when we look into the types of classifications we have had in history, right? So the forms, the types of classification. So if you look into the types, the forms in which we have tried to classify elements over time, right? Broadly, we can classify these methods into two types, okay, into two types of methods of classification, okay. The first method is the classical method, okay, the classical method. The second method is the modern method, 
I will explain to you what each of these means. Classical method. Now, classical means very traditional, something which has been going on for generations and generations for a long period of time, and we've been following that method overall, right? So that's the classical method. Now, the classical method was based, okay, it was based on the concept of atomic mass, okay, on the basis or on the concept of atomic mass. We used to classify elements on the basis of their atomic mass. They were arranged on the basis of their atomic mass. So, the classical concepts revolved around the use of the atomic mass of elements as the key factor in classification. Okay. Then we come to modern types of methods. This modern form of classification did not revolve around atomic mass, but it revolved around atomic number. Atomic number. Right? You know what is atomic mass? Atomic mass is basically the mass of an atom with respect to one uh, with respect to 1 by 12th part of a carbon 12 isotope. This is class 9 syllabus chemistry, right? The, second, uh, the third chapter, atoms and molecules. And then we have atomic number. Atomic number basically is the number of protons in the nucleus. Number of protons in the nucleus. And it is denoted by Z. Okay, it is denoted by Z. So, these are the two methods of classification. One was the classical method, which was which revolved around atomic mass. And on the basis of atomic mass, elements were grouped. And then we come to the modern method, which revolved around atomic number. That is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, of an element. Right? Now, the classical methods of classification are, number one, Dobrenius triads. Dobrenius triads. Okay, this is the first modern method. The second method is Newland's octaves. Newland's octaves. And the third method is Mosel, uh, sorry, Mendeleev's, Mendeleev's periodic table. Mendeleev's periodic table. Because all of these revolved around the use of atomic mass these three okay Doberanius triads Newland's octaves and Mendeleev's periodic table they all are revolved around the concept of atomic mass we will study all of them in detail in the coming videos and then, then we come to the modern method which was exemplified and which was brought about by with the, the periodic table or the classification which we use in modern day chemistry that is Moseley's periodic table Moseley's periodic table, which is commonly called the modern periodic table. Okay, the modern, the modern periodic table. Right? So, these are the forms of classification. Classical and classical and modern. The classical include Dobrenius triads, Newland's octaves and Mendeleev's periodic table. And the modern form of classification involves Moseley's periodic table or the modern periodic table. Right? So, these were the forms of classification which erupted. And it's today that we use the modern form of classification. And it is the most widely accepted even by the IUPAC. That is the International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. Right? So, this was a basic introduction to periodic classification of elements. In the next video, we will be beginning with the first uh, form of classification, that is the classical form classification, and we will be beginning with Dobrenius triads and Newland's octaves. Thank you very much.